morning all. Tens of thousands of Queenslanders can't be wrong. Tens of thousands of Queenslanders want to see a Youth Justice Act that works for them. Tens of thousands of Queenslanders want to see consequences for action. And tens of thousands of Queenslanders want an appeal to a bad decision that will allow a bad person back in the community sooner than what they should. Now, at the focus of any good system is consequences for actions. And at the problem, the problem at the moment is one of the glaring holes in our Youth Justice Act is that there are no consequences for actions. And while you have a system where breach of bail isn't an offence, you will continue to see the same crimes committed in the same suburbs. The only thing that changes is the families whose lives are ripped apart. And when I talk about breach of bail, I, I want to be really clear, it's a simple question we ask the community. Do you want to see consequences or actions, or don't you? And tens of thousands of Queenslanders have proven that they want to. You ask the question, is it one car or two? Is it one home or two? Is it one business or two? Because if you don't have a system where breach of bail can be an offence, you're effectively saying that you have to wait for the next offence before there can be consequences for actions. And part of that involves early intervention and being able to help turn people around in their life's journey before they enter into more serious crime. Part of that involves holding bad repeat offenders accountable. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to another brave Queenslander who's joined the fight today, and Ben Cannon has signed this petition. Um, ben displayed real bravery and real ticker. Um, when he went to the defence of not just his family but his neighbour's family as well and I thought uh, I'd give him the opportunity to share his story and explain why he's decided to sign the petition. Good morning to you, Ben. Uh, thank you. Um, I, uh, I got a call up to, to sign the petition and, and the reason I've chosen to sign this petition after seeing the, um, the, the outpouring of emotion from, from everyone involved is that um, my family and my neighbours were a direct result of an ineffective system to retain these juveniles that commit these crimes. Um, in that instance, our lives changed forever and the, um, I guess the, the lives of these people that continue to cause these crimes go on seemingly unchanged. Um, so for me, in my personal experience, um, I, I, I feel that it's an important cause that I want to make sure that my signature and my voice is heard to make change. So the, 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 the semantics of politics I don't understand. What, what I do understand is this. Um, since the incident which is approaching its anniversary for us, there wouldn't be a week, even a day goes by, where I don't meet a Queenslander or someone in my community that's been in some way changed or affected by a crime in their home. So what I don't understand is why our government and our leaders don't feel the same emotions and anguish that the community does. So should change happen sooner? Absolutely. Why hasn't it? Not my answer. I don't have the answer for that. Yeah, that's a good question. I was uh, I was unfortunate enough to meet someone that was very good at crime, that um, was very confident with a weapon, and felt in someone else's home that they were the ones that were calling the shots. That's not someone that's done it once. That's someone that's done it again and again and again. And each time they do it, it's in some ways an apprenticeship on um, a very unsavoury uh, behaviour which our whole community gets affected by. So what I'd like to see happen is I actually feel the system that's available now for these poor... And I've got to say, to end up in my house with a knife, something's terribly wrong at home. So I feel the system's letting these people down because they don't. Now, you know, the do goodles will say you can't, but I say, why not send them jackarooing? Why not send them to the military? There's, you know, there's, we apparently have a labour shortage, and we're letting these people roam the streets on taxpayers' money. 
I'm sure there's smarter solutions that we can put these people on a different path than the one they're on right now. Very much, very much so, Rachel. And, and I don't think that breach of bail alone will be the panacea to fix youth crime. But it is a good start because it's consequences for action. Um, but I've never stood before you and said that the only solution to fixing youth crime is, you know, get people and whip them at dawn. That, that's not my style. Um, part of it involves giving people hope. And part of that is early intervention and showing people what employment can do to unlock the opportunity to own a home and to aspire for more. And we've got to do that. And we've got to get in early and provide that. But you also have to have a system that provides consequences for actions for those really bad repeat offenders. And I, I quote this figure because to me it's, it's startling, but when you have in a 12 month period, 92 offenders in Queensland who have committed 30 or more individual crimes in that 12 months, you know the system isn't working. And, and that is a system where people don't feel that there are consequences for action and they don't see hope and they just continue to tear a different family's lives apart. And they get released and they go back and do the same thing and it happens time and time again. And until you have breach of bail as an offence, as a starting point, you're effectively signalling to a generation of youth criminals that they're free to go and do as they please and Queenslanders aren't comfortable with that and that's why tens of thousands have signed the petition and I suspect it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and I want the government to start listening because this is serious to people and there's two elements to this one is the appeal well I think if ever there was a case of something that doesn't meet community expectations this one is right up there uh, but the second is the laws people are sick of seeing the same thing that you've heard has happened to Ben and his family and they want a system where there are consequences for actions. And I think most good fair-minded Queenslanders want to also know that there's an opportunity for people to turn their life around. But a good system has um, safeguards at both ends. Is it the, um, these youth gangs, Northside gangs, Southside gangs, that main MO is to steal the best car possible and they post it on social media? Yep. But then when it comes to the point of reporting those social media posts, it seems as though um, there is no doubt there is a new wave of young criminals and there's a level of notoriety that has, social media has brought about and it's all about what kind of start car you can steal, not just stealing a car. And I was speaking to somebody just on the weekend who's been a, a victim in Toowoomba and um, there is no doubt that at the moment that beautiful community that was had a very low crime rate. At the moment there's a small gang of youths who are terrorising the place and they are looking for um, high-end motor vehicles. There is no doubt about it. Um, but that's why breach of bail is a great opportunity to hold people accountable. Police could use social media to identify where these kids are and what they're doing. That's a pretty good starting point because they're doing it in real time. But at the moment police have their hands tied behind their back and it's not until another offence is committed that there can be any form of accountability and that is a broken system particularly with those who are beginning their life of crime early on in the journey um, there is no doubt that social media has created a new demographic of a group of young criminals who think they're some sort of gangsters out of the US and it's deeply troubling and unless the state government takes it serious they're going to continue to commit more crimes they're going to be more violent and they're going to be more frequent Mm. Um, because it doesn't hold consequences for action if somebody commits something that is wrong. And when the state government announced their changes 12 months ago, we said at the time we would back them, um, but we also said that unless there were consequences for actions, things wouldn't turn around. And that has proven to be the case. And the flagship of that was the GPS bracelets. Um, they've been an abject failure and um, by anyone's standards to have three fitted and none out at the moment in the community shows you that it was all about a headline, it was never about substance and that troubles me because I'm, I'm not sure who the attorney and the Premier are listening to but the Queenslanders I'm listening to are telling me about 
um, this turning their lives upside down. And I mentioned Toowoomba before, but you can pick a community. It, it can be Cairns, it can be Townsville, it could be Mackay and Rocky, Gundawindi at the moment, in the grips of it. Uh, Mount Isa has a level of youth crime it hasn't seen for a long time. And then in Brizzy, both on the north and the south side, you've got these rival gangs. Uh, we're seeing shootings on the Gold Coast, and there are pockets in the Sunshine Coast that are troubling, and everywhere in between. Uh, there is a real issue, and at the heart of any good system are consequences for actions. If you don't have that, it will be just played again, and it will be just the face of the family whose life gets ripped apart that changes. But, that, but that's troubling. Well, 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 I would say if one of the conditions is that you have to wear a bracelet, but one of the ways of getting out of it is for an offender to say they don't want to wear it, I would suggest it's, that that is poorly drafted legislation. If that is the flagship of, of your program to um, deal with repeat offenders, and we're talking about the hardcore, we're talking about those who are the ones committing the tens of crimes over and over again. But if one of the defences is that they don't want to wear the bracelet, I would suggest to you that's a policy about a headline, not about results. And you can't mean to tell me that at the moment in Queensland there's only been three people who were worthy of wearing that bracelet in the last 12 months, and that there's no one in, at the moment in the community who's been given the great privilege of bail um, who shouldn't have that as a condition. If you're going to have a policy, you've got to be serious about implementing it. And the more I see about the government, the more it's always about the headline and about the announcement, but no one's ever following something through. No one ever says, well, this is serious and therefore we are going to enact uh, legislation and enforcement of it across a range of spectrums to deal with it. That's the problem in Queensland at the moment. If a sentence, if a condition of bail is that a young offender has to wear a GPS bracelet, I don't believe the young offender should have the right to tell a magistrate that they don't want to wear one. This isn't about fashion advice, this is about going into a community on bail and that is a privilege. And if that is a condition that has been set, it should be enforced. Um, I know it's early days in New South Wales and they're discussing that at the moment and we, we should always be open-minded um, to things that, um, that get put forward. Uh, but I'll make a point about taxation in Queensland at the moment. Um, if you look at the revenue that is being generated in Queensland, no other state has the largest that is coming to us than Queensland at the moment. Uh, we have a correlation of factors the likes of which we've never seen before record stamp duty, large payroll tax and mining royalties the likes of which we haven't seen in generations. Queensland doesn't have a revenue problem. What we have is a government that doesn't know its priorities and where to spend its money. And what's troubled me in recent days has been um, somehow the government's on this softening up campaign that uh, unless they find a way to find new taxes, despite a promise not to have new taxes, that there won't be an ability to deliver services. That's the exercise at the moment. And it's a conga line. Every day there's another minister coming out and saying that, well, we don't know the details of it, but insert name of business that we want to attack here. When you increase taxes on businesses, you increase taxes on Queenslanders. And governments who make promises should keep promises. And I've heard all the slippery words. We've heard excise and duty and levy and structural refund adjustment. It's another tax grab. And at the moment, the government has this insatiable appetite to whack Queenslanders with new taxes, despite saying they wouldn't. Um, it, shows, it, sh it shows the level of frustration with Queenslanders at the moment. And that's not a slight on police. Uh, that's a reality of a lack of resources and weak laws that allow the same people to do the same thing time and time again. And is it any wonder why everyday Queenslanders are frustrated because they work hard to pay for their cars and their houses 
and they want to know that their families are safe. And at the moment in Queensland, you have um, police numbers at a level way below what they should be and weak laws that allow the same people to do the same thing time and time again. Thanks very much.